on the eternal drama, where one moment we feel invincible with the world at our own feet. The unexpected happens when we least expect it. Soon we are full of remorse and despair. Life grinds to a halt. Then we do not feel like going on anymore. And finally, we meet a person who touches us, transforms us, and gives us hope. We are no longer afraid, hard as a rock in our resolve. We stop not until a greater goal is reached. Parash, the touchstone, is based on a true story set in the late 19th century and cuts across the US, Europe, Egypt, and India. It is the story of the iconic Hindu monk Swami Vivekananda and Emma Carway, a third famous French diva. They bring together the best of East and West in a gripping tale of transformation and hope in difficult times. There are reflections, visions, and mental health impacts that are as relevant in April of 2022 with COVID-19, a war in Ukraine, as they were back then. Depicting human strength and hope, it is created and produced by Vedanta Center of Melbourne. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you Parash the Touchstone. Thank you. I still feel his presence flowing through me, like the water flowing through the Ganges, whispering to me, guiding me, making me feel that he is always with me, <coughs> in eternal unity. Now. I am standing at the banks of the river Ganges, which have crossed its way through this ancient civilization in India for thousands of years. Here is his final resting place in Bailu or Calcutta. It draws me. Seventeen years back, I told him that that I felt like dying, that I could not go on anymore.
and gentlemen is Emma Calvey, who needs no introductions. She has been enthralling the crowds and opera lovers and critics across Europe for over 10 years. We are fortunate to witness Madame Calvé's first performance of this Maiden U.S. tour, starting here in the recently reconstructed Chicago Lyric Opera, today in 1893. Accompanying her is the director, André Martin. And the legendary Julia Dubois, the set and costume design supervisor and the senior performer. Chloe has died from severe burns. Oh, 
story, when did it happen? It's when Emma was still performing. We must tell Emma. What? Now come on, Andre. Get yourself together. who have. In fact, I know the Hales who are all sitting here in Chicago. In case you are interested. Something 
compels me. I feel uh, a pull. It is mysterious. Juliet, what is this feeling that is providing me? What am I to do? Shall I go? Shall I go and visit him this with with Akananda? Welcome, my dear. Emma, ever since we saw you, you transported us into another world. Yes, see. You look for that since Swami and Vida Vakanda has been our guest. Many have come to visit her. Swami Viva Yes. You do want to No. We. No. Maybe. Can I please meet him, Madame? Of course you may. Please come in. You may have to wait a little while. He's in meditation. So please wait till he gets up. Welcome, my child. Come, don't be afraid. Swamiji, this is Emma, the famous diva from Paris. She's now performing at the Chicago Lyric Theatre. <clears throat> you look troubled. You must be calm. It is essential. Be calm? How can I be calm? You have no idea of the ordeal that I'm going through. I know. <laughs> I do know the pain of a mother losing her child. Ah, the pervades of impermanence. One moment, you are at the pinnacle of success, and in the next, your most precious treasure, your daughter, is taken away from you, leaving you, the mother, devastated. You have even tried to take your life, haven't you? Not just once or twice, but twice. And now here you are, not knowing why you're here or how you even got here. Hmm? Mother, this is the difficulty of impermanence making us feel at times that we are the makers of our destiny and at others that we are floating aimlessly, merely being swayed by destiny, like a puppet. Swamiji, how do you know all of this? Who told you about me? Oh, my child, you're intelligent. Why ask such a question? 
I feel I have said something foolish. No one has spoken to me. Do you really think that is necessary? I read you like an open book. What else do you know about me? Failed relationships have repeatedly troubled you. And how precious a daughter might have been to a mother in a failing relationship. That too. Now. That is true. And why me? Mother, can you show her how to hold water in her palm? Of course. Could I hold water in my palm? How can you with your fist clench? See, I can neither hold water if I straighten my palm. What do you mean to say? Could I hold water now? Is it not obvious? That's it. If you clench your fist, you cannot hold water. If you straighten your palm, it's somewhere between the two. Neither tight grip nor straightened palm. Just a little curvature. That's what's needed to hold the water. It's the same with our relations. Neither being too possessive nor totally dismissive. But leaving space for love to thrive and blossom. That's what's needed. That is, and I open up, Swamiji. It answers the host of all things that I've had to go through in my life. I, I do comprehend, but. Dear child, nothing lasts forever. This grief and turmoil will also pass. They come and they go. Do not dwell in silence upon your sorrows. Be happy. Be cheerful. Build upon your strengths. You must transmute this grief and emotions into an irresistible energy through your art and by your performances, bringing joy to your audiences and rekindling their hopes. Your spiritual health requires this. Your art demands it. How did you go with 
Swami Vivekananda tell me everything. You need to. Swami Vivekananda is like, like uh, a gentle Jew. Oh, he drenched my soil and noticed. He emptied my brain of feverish complexities and instead placed their clear and calming thoughts. Oh, I have started feeling vivacious and cheerful thanks to the effect of this powerful moon. But he did not use any ordinary hypnotic or mesmeric influences. It was, it was his strength of character, the purity and intensity of his purpose that carried conviction. Oh, do you know he gave me the strength to transform my grief to glory? So bright and full of joy. It's so nice to see it so totally rejuvenated. Oh, now see, seems to you, Juliet. Oh, it has been my good fortune to know a soul that works with God. A noble being and a true and wise friend. Juliet, he opened new horizons before me, teaching me a brother understanding of truth. Showing me the light where it was so intensely dark. Oh, my soul was bearing an eternal gratitude. Liliana, could you please introduce me to him before he leaves Chicago? Uh, what? Of course! Oh, Juliet, that would be brilliant! Oh, my aunt is pining to see him again! Oh, we can go together and I can introduce you to Madame Anne. story about the man and the peacock? No. <laughs> a man once fed a peacock a little bit of opium at four in the afternoon. The next day the peacock was back exactly at four o'clock. When you felt the intoxication, it was time for another <laughs> Emma is strong and creative. It's a grand sight to see a pine tree withstand the might of a cyclone, is it not? We, oui. and for me, the cyclone has passed. It is now a cool and gentle breeze. The gentle breeze of grace has dawned upon me. I do not want to die anymore. <clears throat> I want to live.
this is Radio France. Today is the 10th of November, 1900. Light snow is falling in Paris with a light drizzle. Here is today's breaking news from our special correspondent. Madame Emma Calve, the world-renowned diva, fugitive from the surgeon's knife, has broken all her opera contracts. The terror of physical pain and possible death has driven her to seek the aid of spirituality against the malady for which Western science can prescribe nothing better than the knife. A friend, philosopher, and guide in this search is Swami Vivekananda, the learned and handsome Hindu monk who is here to attend the World's Fair of Paris. <coughs>
once you have merged and then you return, <coughs> you are no longer the same. Your vision broadens. And with that broadened vision, you can rebuild your life. And returning <coughs> as a little drop of rain, you do so as a blessing, as a benediction upon this thirsty earth. Others will find refuge in you. How to merge? How to seek this eternal unity? Don't seek it. See it. See with open eyes this eternal play in the unfoldment of destiny across human races and cultures. Interact with people. Move around. Become a nomad. It will only make you wiser and saner. It will rejuvenate you. And who knows? It may even save you from surgery. <laughs> seen the United States of America, United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, and now France. So why not on this trip we include Austria, the Balkan states, <coughs> Asia Minor, and then finally Egypt? Oh, oui. oh Spamichi, you have just out the route. And that is the route we will follow. Oh, this is going to be the trip of the century. it was, the Swami was always so absorbingly interesting. He fascinated his hearers with his magic tongue. Sitting in the station waiting room enthralled by his discourse, we would miss our train again and again, finding ourselves stranded and far from our destination at the most inconvenient times and places. Thanks. <laughs> 
It's one hour later. Why are you relaxed? <laughs> you have no sense of time. You live in time. I live in eternity. <laughs> To travel with you is an education, Swamiji. Education? Ha! I can think of much better words. <laughs> Swamiji, as we are traveling here, what is your observation? I see soldiers everywhere. Throughout Europe, there seems to be a craze for soldiers. And this wave of nationalism seems to be sweeping over Europe, making people who belong to the same race, who profess the same faith, and speak the same language, wanting to unite. Wherever such a union is effectively accomplished, I see manifestation of great power. But where it's not, death seems inevitable. Swamiji, do you foresee any such catastrophes? I clearly see that when the present Austrian Emperor dies, Germany will try to absorb the German-speaking parts of the Austrian Empire. But Russia and others are just as sure to oppose her. There is possibility of dreadful war. Yes, Swamiji. I can just see it now. The next opera to be composed. La Grande Tragedie. <laughs> the Great Tragedy. And what better place to premiere it than right here in Vienna? Where we have just missed our train and we have been waiting for more than one hour! <laughs> Swamiji, uh, who knows your words may be a prophecy? Whatever. A keen observer realizes that the past is a living part of the present, and in the present is encrypted the script of the future. <coughs> to leave Vienna. May I ask how you enjoy Vienna? <laughs> ah. Vienna is a small city modeled after Paris. But Paris, as they say, is Paris after all. Nothing else can compare. So, <laughs> you are all praised for Paris. Well, seeing the rest of Europe after Paris, frankly, Feels like having something bland to eat after a sumptuous feast. <laughs> you get the same bland food everywhere, same drab fashion. People wearing the same black trousers, black coat, and black black cap. You know, and the same black clouds above. Ah. <laughs> oh, Paris! <laughs> ah, Paris at last. Now I agree with you there. Andre, did I just see you say that? <laughs> Is this not just the respectable uniformity of yours? But in that respectable uniformity, I see signs of decay. A fate surely worse and more irre irreparable than war. It was just the product of democracy, no? Democracy of the unenlightened is mobocracy. It will lead them to mass lunacy. No, no, no. Europe must cultivate an aristocracy of intelligence to prevent the unenlightened from killing another Christ or Galileo. is a perpetual source of inspiration. We live in an intense spiritual atmosphere. His mere presence invigorates our surroundings and fills one's heart. And then there is an immediate transformation within. We would witness it again and again. Those camels. 
What is this? Stones. Stones? When death approaches me, all weaknesses vanish. There are no fears, no doubts, no thoughts of the external. I simply busy myself making ready to die. I am as hard as these. For I've touched the feet of God. That is a revelation, Swamiji. I do feel it. This cannot scare me anymore. I do am a what is this. And what is the revelation? Now? Attachment and detachment. Detachment and attachment. <laughs> From my ailing body, I feel the message of attachment. But from the soil, I feel the message of detachment. The body is limited. Therefore, the body wants to bind us and restrict us. But the soil, the soil, is limitless. Therefore, the soul wants to free us from the meshes of ignorance and liberate us. <coughs> In my attempt to run away from my daily body, you brought me home to my eternal soul. And now, now I feel the strength. It's like a lion breaking forth the iron cages. Oui. Nirgachanti Jagat Jalat Pinjarat Oh, Swamiji. How practical a way of enlightening us. I, I really appreciate it. It was a revelation indeed. We cannot avoid death. But, but we can transcend death. Not by running away from life by being fully involved in life. But, but why think of death during this trip of the century? I'm afraid I shall not be continuing with this trip anymore. Why, Swamiji? I wish to return to India. Touched by your generosity, Emma. You are as generous as you are a great artist. But then why do you want to leave us? My health is failing. The boat of this life is nearing its shore. I wish to return to India to be amongst my brother monks when I die. No, Swamiji, you cannot die. Sapling cannot grow under the shade of a banyan tree. As long as I'm around, you will all remain spiritual saplings. You won't grow. The banyan tree must wither. My play is done. I shall die on the 4th of July. That is America's independence day, no? <laughs> and it will be mine too. Independence from the shackles of this body to the freedom of my soul. But know it for certain, it shall not be an escape. Perhaps I shall find it good to get out of this body. To get rid of it, like a disused garment. But I shall not cease to work. I shall inspire men everywhere. Until the whole world realizes that is one with God.
A year later, we returned to study dive in a state of samadhi, which means to die voluntarily without sickness or accident. Now, when traveling to India, I visited the monastery where the Swami spent his final day. His mother brought me there. A beautiful marble tomb was erected over his grave. And the monks of the Swami's brother would greet us with kind and simple hospitality. And at our feet, the mighty Ganji flow. And musicians play plaintive chants that fill the very heart. The hours that I have spent there will remain in my memories forever. From him, I learned that Nothing lasts forever. The memorial does pass. I learned that I can be happy and cheerful and build upon my strengths. I learned to transmute my life into an irresistible energy through my performances to bring joy and rekindle love to my audiences. He exhorted me that my art demanded I give my all. And so I did. But my art gave me back so much more than you tell. in the way of detachment. And now, 
now I feel puffy. Now I am at peace. Now I am at one with the water. The ganges is flowing by. to the entire cast of Farah that Star for taking us through such a wonderful journey of hope and transformation. In the play, Amelia Holmering plays Emma Carway. <laughs> Saurabh Mishra plays Swami Vivekananda. Claire Wright plays Julia Dubois. <laughs> Franco Leo plays Andre Martin. <laughs> and finally, Sue Rosenwax plays Mrs. Head. <laughs> Please have a round of applause. 